Hey guys, the news okay EK. Right now on screen I have the wideband wiring instructions. Now this is for the X series gauge. I've edited it from the original. The original is really old. It's outdated. If you have an X series gauge, follow this one. You do not need to wire both D21 and D22. It just depends on when you look at your harness one of them or both might have a ground so just choose one whichever one has a ground and wire that in now when you have everything wired in we can go ahead and go to the parameters we select D1402 and then copy my table right here half a volt we're reading eight and a half to one air fuel ratio 3.7 volts 16.22 air, air to fuel ratio and four and a half volts 18 to one air fuel ratio now the reason why we're able to use the D1402 is because now with the LSU 4.9 sensors the range is a lot farther so the voltages have changed on what they mean exactly or how they translate so now we can tune the car using D14 as the input because of the LSU 4.9 and its range. So obviously if we can read between 8.5 to 1 and 16.22 to 1, we can tune the whole car with this range. So this is why we're able to do that now. Now on, a, on another note, if you have the older AM widebands that's not the new X series it's but you it does run an LSU 4.9 sensor then you can still wire it to D14 you're just only gonna have the white wire it'll be red black white and blue cut the blue wire off you don't need it that's only for AEM ECUs Connect the white wire to D14 and the red and black wires, how they go per diagram for power and ground, and you won't have to you won't have to put a ground unlike the people that own the X series gauge, they have to use D21 and D22. Alright. The next thing you're gonna want to do is go to the closed loop tab up top here, and you're gonna want to go to your drop down box and input the closed loop wideband input lambda target and then after that you're going to want to set everything up as how you prefer so these are just per the tuner however much you want the O2 sensor to adjust you adjust these settings right here and you can also adjust the conditions for closed loop so you know above 10.7 inches so anywhere above anywhere above here on this side of the map is open loop everything over here would be in closed loop so above this the O2 sensor is not going to trim the fuel below this actually it'd be more like this below this it will trim the fuel because you can also see on my parameters that our maximum engine speed is 4812 so anything above that we will be in open loop the next things that you're gonna wanna mess with is in your settings you go to the target lambda because this is what actually sets up on an S300 for D and B series this is what sets up your target lambda table so low load which is going to be below 5.4 inches that's what the ECU is going to consider low load you know we want it to be stoic for this case gasoline which is 4.7 to 1 air fuel ratio and then when we get above 5.4 inches of vacuum the ECU is now considering anything in that part of the map medium load and we're going to want to run a 13 on this engine so that's what I put in and then anything that's between 
the fi the 5.5 inches and below 1 psi it's going to want to run the 13 that's what it's going to be shooting for now high load is anything above the 1 psi we want to run a 12.8 or sorry that is not correct we want to run an 11.8 air to fuel ratio a 12.8 would be good for like a naturally aspirated so of course, all of that you can change on your own. Target lambda per engine coolant temperature. So when the engine's colder, you know, you need it to be a little bit richer for it to stay on. And then as it warms up, you know, we can run it uh, at stoic. Target lambda by load. So this is gonna be in KPA though. Um, this is gonna be your wide open up here, 120. And above it's gonna be a wide open so this is set up right you know this is gonna be per the tuner how they want to do it closed loop minimum temperature so the minimum temperature that you want it to be um, this is gonna be air temp and water temp closed loop minimum ECT vehicle speed minimum so this is gonna be depending on if the car is uh, just getting up to speed or this is really fine-tuned um, usually you don't have to mess with any of that stuff unless you got something going on like a big cam or something and you're still wanting to use the O2 sensor I don't think there's anything else oh yeah actually there is something else so on the display you know you're gonna wanna put new value right click on that box close loop and AF so this is this box over here that I have set up so I'm just gonna cut this that's gonna remove it um, when you turn the car on this is what's gonna be your air to fuel ratio that's reading from your AEM wideband now in my case mine is set up to show lambda I don't I don't even know if you could change this on the display to read uh, air to fuel ratio so I mean it's just a good idea for you guys especially anyone running E85 you should learn your lambda to AFR scale uh, 1.0 is gonna be your stoic for any fuel now in our case 1.0 stoic for gasoline 93 octane is going to be that 14.7 to 1 so we want when we have uh, the car on it's warmed up and the, the engines idling and it's not trimming as much the AFR is very steady it's it's important that the AFR stays steady for when we're going to calibrate it to translate to the ECU accurately now in my case I had to do a voltage offset of 0.78 for my AEM wideband and the display on the ECU to read exactly the same. Um, you might turn your car on and you'll notice that your gauge will say 13.0 but the air to fuel ratio over here will be 1.0 lambda which is 14.7 so if that ends up being your case you need to adjust this either up or down in voltage but in order to get it to read the same now the AEM gauge is what is going to be it accurately reading the O2 what you need to do with this voltage offset or what's happening is you're you're getting this right here to read exactly the same as your gauge and when you have that set up then you won't have to mess with it ever again it'll be permanently calibrated to translate to the ECU so if you guys uh, had a, have any more questions on this you can feel free to reach out to me on Facebook or in the comments um, email me and I'll help you it's no issue I like helping people so just hit me up I think that this video is going to help countless others that have AM widebands in their car and 
the car is running like shit because they don't have it wired to the ECU. It is literally that easy. It'll take you 15 minutes to wire your AM wideband to your ECU and have it trimming fuels. And you'll be saving a lot of gas and the car will be running a lot better. The news OKEK OK, signing out.